everybody, this is Jordan from Haunted Falls Paranormal and I'm going to take you all on a journey for some research that I did on a few of the families of Ritchie Cemetery. And while we have the light, I am going to bring you all over there. It's about the uh, Gilmore family. I've been drawn to Carlisle Lee. She was a baby that passed away in 1950 about a year old, 18 months, um, and I was drawn to her spirit and I could feel she has not found her family yet. So she's, even though her parents are buried there and her grandmother, she still hasn't found him yet. She's a lost spirit. So anyway, let's go. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Haunted Balls Paranormal. This is Jordan. Um, I'm out here in Ritchie Cemetery. I had been feeling baby Carlisle Lee Gilmore. I'd been drawn to her grave, like I said at the beginning, and I felt she was still there, still over here. And I wanted to do some research and tell you guys a little bit about this family. It's pretty tragic because sadly baby Carlisle only lived one year. And uh, Let's go, shall we? Hey, Haunted Falls Paranormal, this is Jordan. We're going towards baby Carlisle's grave. We're gonna find it. Remember exactly where it is. Brandy Lynn's. Okay, after searching for a long while, I found it. This is baby Carlisle's grave. This is her father, Gilmore H. Carlisle H. Gilmore. This is her mother, Lovely Lovelace Gilmore. And her grandmother's around here somewhere. But these are my main subjects right here. A little bit about uh, Carlisle H. Gilmore. Whoa. 
That was crazy. Whoa. <laughs> that was a would-be, I hope. Crazy. A little bit about Carlisle H. Gilmore. He was born September 2nd, 1914. And he was a minor league baseball player. He was a pitcher. Uh, he had a complied career record of five wins and 21 losses and 6.20 ERAs in his 44 game pitching career with the Lake Charles Skippers. He also was on the team, the Lafayette White Sox, the Troy Trojans, and the Bruton Millers. Which is pretty cool. I didn't, some of these I knew existed, other teams I did not. This was cool to find out. He began playing during the 1936 season and last took the field during the 1941 campaign. Carlisle Gilmore was minor, a minor league baseball statistics and you can find it on stars, statscrew.com, stars. So Melanie Perry on findagrave.com actually put this up, which I thank her for. Um, this is Charles H. Gilmore's obituary. Moss Bluff Funeral Services for Carlisle. His nickname was Champ Gilmore, age 71. He was 71 when he passed. We'll be at 3.30 p.m. today, February 9th, in Johnson's Funeral Home. The Reverend Charles Willis will officiate. Burial will be in Ritchie Cemetery, which is where we are now. Mr. Gilmore died at 12.35 a.m. in the Lake Charles Hospital. He was a lifelong resident of Lake Charles and had been a commercial fisherman for 25 years. He was a former professional baseball player. He was going up to the minor league, major leagues. He was in the minor leagues. Survivors include his wife, Lovis Reeves Gilmore, one son, Zip Gilmore, which I found it from Lovis Howard W. Zip Gilmore. One daughter still lives in Moss Bluff, Miss Suzanne G. Martell and one brother, Morris Gilmore, of Crowley, Louisiana, and he has one grandchild. So, this is his grave. And this is baby Carlisle Gilmore. Sadly, she was only a year old when she passed. She was born June 10th, 1949, and passed away, passed away at 18 months, a year old, December 30th, 1950. Now, it didn't say, I couldn't find how she passed, but um, probably a disease now or sickness that back then in the 50s we, had not, we did not have a cure for. That's just my speculation until I can find out something different. I could feel that the baby did have shortness of breath. And when I found her and my breath would go out of me, like something with the lungs, that's just what I keep picking up from her. And I would get like baseball things, like uh, baseball, dad, baseball. And I didn't, when I would come out here, there's so many spirits. And I didn't know who it was coming from. And now I know it was Carl H. Gilmore who it was coming from. So yes, this is baby Carlisle's obituary. Rites conducted for former Gilmore child, for Gilmore child. Funeral services for Carlisle Gilmore, age 18 months, one year, old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Carlisle E. Gilmore of, of English Bayou Community, was held at the graveside in Ritchie Cemetery at Moss Bluff, Louisiana at 3.30 p.m. Reverend Thomas Ewing was the officiant of the ceremony. The Burke Funeral Home was in charge of all the arrangements. The baby died at 8 p.m. on Saturday night at St. Patrick's Hospital. Now there is some there are some stories of St. Patrick's Hospital downtown in our historic district, especially Salle Cemetery next door, which I did an investigation on, and a coworker of mine told me something about the firmness that wasn't there was an explosion in 1925, which I, I'm still trying to research that. So survivors include one sister parents, the maternal grandmother, Clara Reeves of Lake Charles. And Clara is out here. I just haven't found her yet. But let's go to Miss Levis. Oh wait, okay, we are at Miss Levis Gilmore's. 
Born February 19th, 1919, passed away October 8th, 1997, a faithful wife and mother and a great cook. Now, a little thing about Miss Levis. She, the only thing I could find about her is that she passed away October 8th, 1997 at 78 years old in Moss Bluff, Louisiana. She was actually born in Moss Bluff, Louisiana. Definitely a lifelong resident. Um, I got her funeral service. The funeral services of Miss Levis Reeves Gilmore, 78, will be at 3 p.m. today, October 10th in Johnson Funeral Home. The Reverend Charles Willis will officiate burial will be in Ridgey Cemetery. Visitation is from 8 a.m. Gilmore died at 5 p.m. Wednesday, October 8, 1997, in a local hospital. A lifelong resident of the Moss Bluff area, she was the owner of Miss G's Snow Cone Stand. So she, she was a snow cone stand owner, which is so cool to find out. Survivors include one son, Harold W. Zip Gilmore of Lake Charles, one daughter, Suzanne G. Martell of Moss Bluff, three sisters, Helen Romero and Velma, Moreau, Velma Logan, both of Moss Bluff, who I found out have passed away as well. I haven't found where they are yet, but, and I will, and Billy Feinstein of Los Angeles, and one grandson. So this was from the American Press clipping. Now that's all I could find on them. So I'm glad I got to read this. I wanted to tell their story, and I wanted to tell it right. But I'm going to turn on the... Um, necrophonic app and see if anybody wants to talk. Okay, we're gonna see if the yeah, spirits want to talk. <coughs> Mr. Carlisle? <coughs> Miss Levis? <coughs> Are y'all still out here? <coughs> Have y'all found Carlisle yet? Because last time I know she wanted to find you. Are y'all happy I'm out here letting y'all talk? Does anybody want to say anything? Can you tell me your name? Anybody else?
Richard, are you out here? Y'all want anybody want to talk? Feels good. It feels good out here. Um, does anybody want to say anything? Any LeBruns? Bryant? Okay, thank y'all for talking. Alrighty, um, it's getting starting to get dark. I'm gonna get out of here. I don't feel unsafe in this cemetery, but I definitely don't want to stay here after dark either. I'm glad I got to tell the Gilmore's uh, stories. I wish I could find out more, but I um, hope everybody enjoyed this. Sorry this investigation had to be cut short, but I had to get a new battery in my car tonight because my uh, battery was completely uh, dead. Hence the word dead because we're in a cemetery. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. There's something burning and... But anyway, I'm gonna order some food for me and my mother. And I gotta film this real quick. This is really cool. The lantern lights, the home lights are burning. Lyles, that's cute. That's very cute. They can find their way home. Anyway, love you guys, and I'll see you later. Happy hauntings.